All right, without further ado, I'd like to invite up on stage the next speaker. Um, we have Ajay KM, who's going to speak to us about build generate, building generative AI applications with Amazon Bedrock. Ajay is a lead engineer at Soyeti Technologies. He has more than a decade of experience in the IT industry. He's an AI and robotic process automation enthusiast. He's also a passionate speaker who shares his knowledge across various schools, forums, and communities by taking sessions and contributing back to the overall development society. Uh, with a loud round of applause, can we invite Ajay on the stage, please? Loud round of applause, guys. Thank you. Have I all been? So, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Ajay. Working as a lead engineer at Suyati Technologies, and I am thrilled to be here with all of you at LTD Kochi today. With over a decade in the tech industry, so I have witnessed, I have witnessed the incredible day, journey of technology. So, and now we are stepping into the future of uh, AI creativity. So, I can ask you a question: How many of you have? Uh, worked or played with some uh, generative AI application. What about ChatGPT? Yeah, I know, many of you have. So we are about to dive into an era of generative AI. So in today's section, we will explore the fascinating world of generative AI with Amazon Betro. So without further ado, let's jump into today's agenda. In first few slides, we will talk about an introduction to generative AI, an overview of Amazon Bedrock and its key components, and later we will talk about some use cases and applications, and in later part we will look into the technical aspects, and finally the pricing details. So let's start with generative AI. What is generative AI? Generative AI is all about creating new contents and ideas. It may be images, it may be text, it may be videos, songs. It's all about generating new data. For your understanding, uh, think from a 30,000 feet. So we have artificial intelligence at the top. Under that, we have machine learning. And below that, we have deep learning. And below that, we have generative AI. So I hope you get an idea where this generative AI fits into the overall ecosystem of artificial intelligence. So let's talk about GAN. GAN is actually a sh short form of generative adversarial network, which is actually a crucial framework. And it has a generator and discriminator. So it's actually two sub-models within uh, this GANs network, and which is actually responsible for creating this creative contents. So nowadays, everybody is talking about uh, generative AI, right? So why does generative AI matter? What do you guys think? Yeah. It's all about innovations and creativity, right? So. You don't have that creative mindset right now. Uh, even though you don't have the creative mindset, you can actually use these tools and build our application. So that's why it's more important. And then about efficiency and productivity, right? You can think about maybe a couple of years, we are into that Google search for our finding our results. And nowadays, we switch to or ChatGPT, any other tools, prompts, right? That's why efficiency and productivity comes into picture. So, and if you can think about applications and use cases, like we have so many use cases like text generation, text summarization, image generation, and text to image synthesis. There are a lot of use cases and applications we can discuss in detail about this in our subsequent slides. And here, Betro comes to the picture of uh, generative AI application development. So, Amazon actually simplifies the generative AI application development using Bedrock. So it was come to the preview, I believe, by uh, April 2023, and later in uh, 
September of this uh, year, it's actually generally available. You can actually log into Amazon and I can, you, you can start exploring this uh, technology. So uh, what is Amazon Bedrock is all about, all about? So it's actually a fully managed service from AWS. So it has a lot of high performing foundations model. So you can actually build your applications on top of that foundation model. You don't have, you don't have to worry about your training or your models. There are foundation models already available. You can just explore the foundation models and you can build your application on top of that by using their API. So the Amazon provides all its scalability, security, and uh, privacy. It's all part of the AWS. It's supported over there. So in simple words, it's Amazon Bedrock is actually a foundation platform for building your generative AI application. So foundation models I can describe maybe in our future slides what is all about foundation models. And uh, there are certain uh, uh, environments there we can actually, if you want, we can fine tune your models as well. That's also possible. And as I mentioned, right, that major building block is actually the pre-trained foundations model. So it is available across different domains like text, image, and so on and so forth. And next part is like, it is actually, uh, it can be integrated with all other AWS services available out there. It can be integrated with S3, EC2, SageMaker, and everything. So it's not about uh, better off only, if you want, we can build complex application by integrating with other AWS services. So the integration is actually seamless. So this is actually uh, an idea about foundation model you can see, right? So this is the picture. Once you log into Bedrock, you can see uh, these are the major foundations model available in uh, AWS Bedrock. You can see that logo represents the provider of that uh, model and followed by the name of that particular model. For example, uh, Titan is actually the foundation model provided by Amazon from the family of Amazon itself. So. So we have a lot of foundation model available. These are just a few, I uh, took the picture. I think it's around more than 20 foundation models available there under different providers. You can actually explore this. So coming to the purpose and advantage of uh, Amazon Bed Bedrock, right? It's, uh, nowadays everybody is into the uh, generative AI world and AWS being a tech chain, they also want their footprint over there. So, the major purpose is democratize the development of uh, generative AI applications. That's why they bring this bedrock. And without uh, a deeper knowledge in uh, this machine learning and all those concepts, developers can easily, easily explore and start building their own application. That's what it's all great. And we, we don't have to worry about the scalability, security, privacy. It's all backbone by the Amazon AWS itself. So. So coming to the key components of Amazon Bedrock, so we already mentioned, I thought uh, this I think the third session, we will be uh, hearing about uh, generative AI and Bedrock. So I think some, hope you guys understood some of these themes. So, so the major component is the pre-trained model, as I mentioned, we call them foundation models. So it again, uh, that it will cover the major uh, domains like image, text and everything. And if you have some special use cases like uh, if in that case, you can actually fine tune these models. That's also supported by uh, Bedrock. And next key component is like the, there's, we have a model zoo repository available there. It's actually a Git repository uh, where uh, there are a lot of uh, diverse collection of pre-trained models available. Other than that, what I have shown, that's contributed by AWS as well as the community. So since I mentioned, we can actually fine tune uh, the existing models, right? So this supported a training environment, environment as well. So if you want to fine tune an existing model, so we need a training environment, right? We need to do some fine tuning and we need to uh, train the models and we need to deploy that to the production environment. Then they supported a training environment also. And again, the same case, since we're customizing, uh, fine tuning the model, so there should be a model deployment uh, support that's also provided by 
AWS. So we can seamlessly uh, fine tune our models and deploy to the uh, production environment. So hope you guys following, right? So I think hope the concepts are clear. Yeah. So these are uh, just high level uh, table that represent uh, not all the foundation models. Maybe uh, I took five foundation models uh, from Amazon. So you can see, right, we have foundation model like Cloud, Jurassic, Llama, Titan, everything. And you can see the description, right, what these foundation models can do for us. And you can see who all are the provider of these models as well. And you can see what are the attributes that supported by this foundation model. And this will help you to choose the right uh, model for your application development, right? For example, if you want to create an application that uh, into the uh, image creation, right? So you can think about uh, the stable diffusion model because they are actually the uh, leader in that image generation kind of tool. Yeah, let's talk some, in further slides, we can talk about some use cases and applications and maybe some industries and domains that can be beneficial and some uh, real world application that's already started using this generative AI uh, concepts. So, use cases, uh, we are familiar, right? Image generation, you can actually uh, generate your own custom images if you want. You can customize the images as well. And if you put your image, if you want your uh, Superman version of you, it can provide that version. Maybe an Iron Lady version of you that can provide you that image as well. So you can explore these steps and tool lists. And another cool feature is like text to image synthesis. That means you provide your text input and uh, it will provide the image as the output. That's what text synthesis means. And the other use cases is like text generation summarization. So somebody uh, into the coding background, right? So nowadays these tools can actually write code for us. That's what text generation comes. It can write creative writing, stories and everything. Maybe uh, our when we are kids, right, we have our grandparents for tell a story, but I'm not sure our generation is good at telling stories, but no worries. This AI tools can help you to write uh, stories for you. And let me tell you a fun story. This actually happened real. So uh, this is about one of my friend who is actually working in Singapore. And he usually uh, went to a store over there and, uh, and he met a beautiful Chinese lady over there. This lady, uh, guy is from uh, Assam. He doesn't know anything about uh, Chinese language. He somehow wants to connect with that lady. So, do you know what he did? Any any crazy thoughts? Yeah, he used some of his tool. He uh, get use of his tools and write some letters to that lady. Cutting long story short, now he is dating with that lady. So it can even write love, love letters for you guys. Language is not a ba barrier. You can actually use these tools and explore the stuff. You can think about, uh, suppose that lady write a letter back to him, right? What happened? I don't know whether that happened to my friend, but in that case also, we have the text summarization generative AI tools. You can give that stuff to this tool and you can actually decode what he does, what that lady write to him. So it's all about this tool, guess, explore and use this. So, uh, uh, just a warning, but don't copy paste this idea and if you get a slap on your face, don't blame me. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's talk about some industries and domains that can be helpful, right? I can see uh, massive uh, changes in the gaming and uh, entertainment industry because we have the virtual characters and video games can be beneficial by using these uh, AI tools. And if you are from the Kerala, right, you can uh, see, right, uh, maybe as part of the Onam uh, festival, right, I think Kalyan Silk, they started a, created an advertisement using this generative AI tool and put it in our local newspaper. So you can imagine, right, how much cost they have actually uh, solved, right, without any model, photographers, they can actually leverage using these tools and explore this stuff. So that's wonderful, guys. And some real world application, this is uh, not all the applications. I can see maybe healthcare imaging and e-commerce and production, genera uh, production generation stuff can be already started exploring this 
uh, generative AI tools, and it will be uh, grow as you try as I think. So the benefits and impacts. So always is accelerate the innovation. So uh, we can actually uh, within a short time we can actually build our application and come to the market. So and as I mentioned, if you have some special use cases, we you can customize your models and uh, take it to the market. That's also uh, helpful while using this tool. So coming to the uh, technical aspect, so maybe after this second part, right, you will get an idea how to build a your first generative AI application using Amazon Bedrock. So in order to start with, uh, of course, you need an AWS account and some background uh, knowledge in uh, using AWS. And uh, you need to get the access for the AWS models that I can show in the next uh, slide. And as of now, it's supported only five regions, I believe, one, two US regions, and uh, Singapore, Japan, and maybe one European region. As of now, it's available, but I think going forward, it will be expanded to all regions. So, and another thing is like there's a playground available with Amazon uh, Bedrock. You can start uh, explore these models using that playground. And if you are using some application, you can actually have some, uh, may need some API access for the access screen secrecy. And tools, it's up to you. You can use whether uh, VS Code or Git or whatever it may be, Jupyter Notebook or whatever like. So this is the screenshot. Uh, uh, once you log into the uh, AWS console, right? So you can go to that uh, setting section, so under the bottom. So where can you can actually request access for uh, the uh, available uh, foundation models. So just go through, you can read about all the overviews, examples, what are the providers within this AWS console, you can read about and uh, what are interesting uh, models available, you can actually request an access. Once the access is granted, you can start playing with setup. So yeah, so this is just an example I have tried with, as I mentioned, right, playground is like, you can see we have playground for text, chat, image, and everything. So without start uh, directly uh, writing your code, right, you can actually play with the available uh, foundation models and see how the output is generating. And after that, you can actually start your application. So first you have to get your hands dirty with your playground and uh, we can take it up further. So, and if you can see, uh, this is a just a query I have tried with the, uh, K21 is the provider and Jurassic uh, 2 MIT is the model I have used. This is my query, what is AWS Bedrock. And you can see uh, the uh, response that they have given. And there are some options in the configuration session. You can see, right, something like uh, temperature, uh, length, and like that. So because there are some configuration we can uh, customize while asking questions to this uh, model. Like uh, temperature in the sense, we can provide value from zero to one, I believe. And if you provide the value of one, right, it will uh, pro give you with the most uh, relevant content. That's what it's all about. And uh, length means uh, we can restrict the output. So I want a 200 length of uh, output. We can actually restrict using this uh, length uh, configuration. So another important step is like, uh, if you can see, right, uh, I can, you can see the API request corresponding to this particular request. And so this is the API request under that particular uh, prompt I have made. We can see I have used the model A21 and uh, J2 Ultra. And we can see the body, right? So that's prompt that I have given, what is the structure of that body? And so it's uh, the using that uh, US East one, uh, region. So this will be also helpful while we are actually generating, uh, creating your application. You can actually use this piece of code and you can uh, start writing your application very easily and quickly. So coming to the interesting part, uh, how to build uh, some your first sample application with Amazon Bedrock. So this is actually I have written using uh, Python. So if you can see, uh, there is something called uh, Boto3, that's actually a SDK for Python, and uh, it can actually communicate with all the resources in the AWS. It's not about Bedrock, it can communicate with all other resources, maybe uh, S3, uh, Lambda, everything, it, it can be communicated. So in order to build your application, you can see 
uh, we need to have a prompt data. So that, that's where I put my question. What is AWS bedrock? And then we will be putting uh, the body. So we can see, we can uh, putting like prompt, the prompt data and what is the uh, maximum tokens. Tokens is like uh, uh, the model, the way model understand our prompts. That's all about tokens probably because they don't understand our natural language. So they will convert our uh, prompts to tokens in background. So, and you can see the model like uh, Claude model and uh, the content type we'll be using application JSON. And in order to get the result, right, just use that uh, API, photo3 bedrock dot invoke model that will actually send that request to that model and you can actually print your uh, result. So this is just a sample. If you want, you can actually, uh, you, suppose you are not into a Python, Python background, right? Don't worry about, they have SDKs in almost all uh, languages like uh, C Sharp, Java, Node, everything. So according to your favorite, you can actually try it out with different uh, languages. So this is really interesting, right? So that's, uh, you can, Maybe if you haven't uh, tried with this stuff, so maybe you can go to home and try to create some accounts and try to, it's really interesting. So, because uh, today's session, we don't have the uh, privilege to have a demo because it's just a 30 minute session. That's why I did it in the sessions. So, moving to the final parts and uh, what are the pricing tires available? And we have four pricing tires available, uh, free tier to the uh, large tire section. So we, here you can get an overall idea, right? So how much it costs you? Maybe based on this, you can actually decide while your application uh, starting phase, you can decide how much of cost it can be uh, generated as part of your AWS application development. And on the right part, you can see that's the just comparison and uh, the model cloud, instant and cloud is actually from uh, AWS itself. And the bottom part, we have chat GPT 3.5 and 4. If you get, can compare, right? GPT 3 and uh, the foundation model from Bedrock is almost the same in the pricing level. But if you go to the chat GPT and Cloud V2 is actually a uh, premium kind of stuff in the Bedrock. If you can uh, think in that aspect, I can say uh, the Bedrock is more cost effective also. So, yeah. Yeah, that's all from my side, guys, today. And Thank you for being with me on this session and I hope this 25 minutes is uh, informative. Uh, you can contact, always contact me through my uh, LinkedIn profile and until next time, keep innovating. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ajay. <coughs>